Hi, Chris Morris here with you, taking you through inserting files into OneNote. OneNote is very similar to the remainder of the Office suite in that um, all the actions are, occur along the top part of the ribbon or the taskbar and most of the action in this tutorial will take place in the insert menu. So we'll start with an image. Generally speaking it's best to save an image on your local computer first before inserting it. However later on I will demonstrate how you can uh, send to OneNote an image from the internet and it will reference the site in which it came from which is really useful in encouraging uh, you know, digital literacy and um, authentic resources and bibliographies etc. So for the first instance I'll go to insert a picture and generally speaking it will then default to the My Pictures folder in uh, Windows 7. I'm just going to flick back to Documents where I have a OneNote tutorial folder and you can see there I've got an image of a clownfish. So the image will generally go into the container in which you had selected at the time but you can always drag that outside the container you can make it larger so for instance if this was a science lesson you could then go in and annotate the different parts of the fish um, this is probably wrong scientist but uh, you know things like the dorsal fin and all those sorts of things you can see I've got a double edged arrow there so I'd probably just want a single edged arrow and as we saw in earlier tutorials I can double click anywhere on the OneNote page and it opens up a container and I've labelled that part of the clownfish. So the image side of things is quite simple. Let's move on to PDF and there are essentially two ways that you can insert a PDF into a OneNote. One is via the attach file button or the file printout and I'll just explain the difference between the two. If I go attach file basically what it does is it embeds the PDF file in that document that when it's clicked on it will open in Adobe Acrobat. So I'll just go to Documents, scroll down to OneNote Tutorial and fantastic you see I don't have a PDF in there. If I just go to Desktop for a moment where there is a PDF and for instance Year 12 Multimedia HSC I'll pop that there and you can see that it is now a PDF link that when it's double clicked on it would then open in Adobe Acrobat. So there it is there, it's opened up in Adobe Acrobat, you would close it and that would remain there. So that's inserting a PDF, quite simple, um, good for things like syllabuses etc, doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, the next thing that I'd like to demonstrate is the file printout and again you can do this with a PDF file as well and I'll just explain the difference. The difference is that the file printout will physically display the PDF within the OneNote page so it's good if you needed to annotate the page um, within the OneNote very very useful highlight key points etc. So I'll go to the file printout again I'll insert the same document for consistency and OneNote does its thing. Essentially what's happening here is OneNote is doing a virtual print of the document and it will now input that into OneNote. Now depending on the size of the document this can take some time so you can see there what it still does is put a link, a PDF link to the document and the insert path in which it was inserted from. So for instance here my desktop. If I scroll down you can now see a printed copy in the OneNote of the PDF file. Uh, this is consistent across most of the applications so you could do the same with a Word document or a PowerPoint etc. The beauty of having the file printout is now you can go in and do things like highlight. So for instance, the due date is week nine, let's highlight that using our draw toolbar. So no source college, individual paper-based project journal, etc. So the students can um, mark this document up within the OneNote page. And that's uh, an advantage of inserting a PDF as a printed file. Alright, I'll now move on to a Word document and I'll just scroll down here to the end of the PDF file 
you'll see it's quite long. Um, the beauty of OneNote is that it doesn't really work on paragraphing and spacing etc. It's more about using the containers. So um, you can see at the moment my highlighter is selected. I'll just go to select and type and I can now put my insertion point below that. Now I'll demonstrate the Word document now and it's essentially the same process as the PDF file. You can either attach the file or do the file printout. So attach the file again just taking you through that going through documents, OneNote tutorial, here's my um, Word document, insert that. So if they then double clicked on that, that would then open up Microsoft Word and they would be able to view the document there. And as you can see there it is uh, in Word. I close that and it takes me back to OneNote. Again the other way to do it would be File Printout, Select, Insert and it will insert a printout of that document as was the case with the PDF file. So I'll scroll down there and there is my Word document inserted again, good for um, correction, marking up, that sort of thing. Um, you wouldn't do both, you would just do the um, file printout because you remember it also attaches the document there. Okay, so uh, fairly simple process. Um, what I would like to demonstrate at this point is that with any Word document for instance, and here is the um, ETS staff selections, I could go in and print and send to OneNote as a printed document. So this is very useful. You might be in Word at the time, you're working away, you press print and what will happen is that it will ask me where do I want to insert the printout and if I scroll down I'll put that in my OneNote training and it's section 5 no it's not it's section 4 or 3 3 I'll get that right so I would insert it there press OK and you would see now that it then below the current document it will now put in the Word document there so that's the other way of inserting a Word document. I'm going to move on to PowerPoint now and um, PowerPoint is exactly the same process again but I'd just like to show you this little trick which I've found very very useful. If I go to file and print you'll know that you can print all slides or if I choose the print to OneNote option, which is send to OneNote option, I can print all slides or I can print um, notes pages or outline views or a couple of pages to a slide and that's really really useful because the students could then have these slides in their OneNote, you could be delivering the PowerPoint presentation in class and the students could be annotating this in OneNote on the side there. So here is my um, PowerPoint file of um, three slides which is a handout. I'll go print there and obviously it's not sending to a printer, it's not a paper based copy but an electronic copy and you will see that um, OneNote will start flashing and it says where do you want to insert that. So again I'll go back to my OneNote session 3 and I'm going to insert this into Word PowerPoint this time. Press OK and that's what it comes in like. So students could, in the process of um, you delivering the PowerPoint presentation, they could be making notes about each particular slide, move that notes container over and there they have it. Okay, so uh, really useful in terms of um, using this particular function, I find it very very good. Alright, so I'll now move on to uh, inserting video. Again with video um, it's a very very powerful uh, media type especially when you're doing demonstrations and uh, things like I'm doing now in terms of explaining uh, how to do th something via um, a screen capture but um, you'll know earlier in the year that we um, 
we had a video that we were playing in the Catholic Studies classes and this was to prepare the students for um, the theme make it masterpiece so what we could do is insert that into our OneNote and obviously this is a pre-saved video file and the best format for OneNote is WMV or Windows Media Video alright so I'll just go and attach file there and you'll see in my OneNote tutorial I've got the masterpiece chorus which has been made as a WMV video. I'll hit insert and that then jumps in to the container in which I've selected at the time. So when I click on that video you get a whole new, men new menu called audio and video playback in which I can now press play and this window is resizable by the way And you can see whilst the student is watching that video, they could be taking notes. Obviously, this is not the best video to do that, but um, you know, if it's something about um, you know some sort of form of instruction or analysis, then whilst they're watching the video, they could be recording notes in a little container there, and they can go back and watch the video as many times as they want. What I would say is that videos can often bloat the size of the OneNote, so you just need to be a bit careful about how many videos you would put in. But that's um, a very, very useful tool, and we've used that for the L at U um, OneNote that we've created, uh, and we've closed captioned the videos there to support our students with hearing impairment. So I'll just close that video there. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, okay we've got this wonderful resource called ClickView how do you put in a video from ClickView and I'll just demonstrate that now so if I go to ClickView Player and I'll just do a search and funnily enough I'll search for OneNote and there's a pretty good OneNote video in ClickView and you can see they're introducing OneNote so the, um, for copyright reasons, ClickView will only allow you to um, save a chapter at a time. So if there's a particular chapter that is related to um, something that you're teaching, um, that the students could use at home, then that would be the way to do it. So I'm going to put in the um, introduction to OneNote. It's 48 seconds long, but I think that's a good uh, start for you. So. Um, and notice over here there is a filter for subtitles as well so that's um, always useful so I'll go to this one here I'll right mouse click on that and I'll publish to PowerPoint or intranet so what it does it brings up the video and it will actually start playing the video I'll just pause that there for a second now you can move these little scrubbers along to you know it might be in this chapter that you're after a particular spot you know, which might be there, you could then capture that or I'm just capturing the whole chapter. So I'll hit OK and it will say where do you want to save this. So again I saved it um, in my videos and I've prepared this earlier. So you can see I've saved a whole lot of videos here and I've um, this is the introductory OneNote there, so I won't save it again, there's no point, but it will then go through the process of saving. So then once you've saved it to a spot, it, the process is exactly the same as the previous video that I inserted. I'm going to insert, attach file, I'm going to my videos folder, I'm going to OneNote video, and I'm going to insert that file. Again you click on it, press play, there's my video. Okay, so I'm recording notes about the video. Uh, I just think this is an incredibly powerful tool that gives the students access to their learning um, you know, 24-7. They can go back, review a video. Uh, there's great potential in that. If you'd like to take it a step further, there's um, a recorder in SmartBoard. So you could um, be doing a maths lesson or a music lesson on the SmartBoard, record 
that lesson and the microphone on your laptop would pick up your voice and that would then save as a WMV file which you could then insert into a OneNote. So um, I think that's a fantastic way of students uh, consolidating their learning and go back in, going back and reviewing a particular um, you know, uh, skill or um, problem that they've solved. So I think video is um, a very powerful tool for that. So I've pretty much taken you through um, all the different media types and how they can be put into OneNote.